You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for January 8th, 2021. It's still not safe for work. Recorded live from the world headquarters of the Cornfield Resistance, where we predict Mike Pence will be managing an Omaha Cinnabon under an assumed name before the end of the month. It's the professional left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. Class. Hey, I that was just a little shout out to all of our Better Call Saul friends. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. He's going to need some kind of witness protection or something. Yeah. A, a gentleman named week. Miguel Penso is now managing a <laughs> Cinnabon in Ohio or Omaha. Full beard. Yeah. And, and very, very skittish. Doesn't it? anyone who recognizes him, he runs away. And it's all in black <laughs> and white for some reason. I don't know why. Because probably because that's the way Mike Pence sees the world black and white. And boy, is he on the wrong side of everything having to do with history. We also want to do a shout out to our one of our listeners who sent us a direct message on Twitter and said, looking forward to your three hour podcast today. Yeah. Yeah. That's not going to happen. No. But um, oh, let, <laughs> let me, I just don't have the energy for that after this clear. week. We always record a three hour podcast, but my, <laughs> my, my <laughs> sound editor cuts it way down. Yeah, I to, cut uh, you off at about 48 minutes yeah. and say, we got to finish. Let's to do a, this. To a lean 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> We That's try to right. go an hour. We, we try. We we go well, this week, over an hour. This week we're going to have to pad it out because, you know, geez, what do you, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> I feel like yesterday was Monday. That's what I, that's I where know. I am. I, I mean, my week just kind of. But uh, I'm going to blow up the notes for a moment because I want to talk to you about something. <laughs> here comes the three um, hours. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> I want, well, and I just want to talk about Donald Trump for a minute. Uh, I, I laughed through his hostage video, yeah. which if you have not listened to it, it is like they found a Trump robot yeah. and programmed it to say this, to say yeah. we're going to have a, a peaceful transfer of power. A, a failed Disney audio animatronic. Right. Trump That's exactly that, what yeah. it looked like. Exactly. Yeah. And I was watching it and laughing and thinking about it. And and also I watched Stephen Colbert's show from last night. I watched it this morning. And he said, I'm not going to show you one second of this because the entire thing's a lie. And But I, I thought about it. And, you know, a lot of history was made this week. Yes. This is, yes. This is a week that is going to be in the history books. Well, that's why it feels and, like yesterday was Monday because this week exactly. is, a, is a month there's long. There's so much that is yeah. packed into this week. Yeah. And there's really no need for us to review moment by moment because you all lived it as right. well. Um, but I, it makes me think about all of it and how – we have we on the Democratic side have worked very hard for this week for yes. for taking back the Senate. Yes. I and mean, we should celebrate that. And yeah. we worked hard to take back the White House. Yeah. And it wasn't a sure thing. No. Um, and it's important to, you know, break out the bubbly on, on Inauguration Day in spite of this week to really take time to be grateful and celebrate Uh the win for democracy to, to celebrate that yeah. and to celebrate that we have a Jew and a black minister going to the Senate from Georgia. That is no small thing. The uh, most so, unlikely two guys walk into a bar joke. Yeah, I've really. Ever heard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I also want to, I I'm thinking about this as a historian uh -huh. and how um, thinking back to the beginning of the Trump administration Thinking for, first of all, thinking about the, his inauguration, you know, right. and now they're yelling about crowd size again this week. It's the perfect coda. You mean the American to, carnage? Uh, yeah, right. American carnage. All of it. It's all bookending. Everything is bookending that way. If right. you want to write a book about this, that's mm -hmm. what's what's happening. But I've said this before, you know, and and there have been a lot of comparisons to Hitler in the bunker, including one from Steve Schmidt last night that made you laugh from two rooms away. <laughs> I did. I, oh, he finally started stealing from me. He's he's caught up to 2009. That's great. Nine now, yeah. <laughs> You've got 11 more years to rip me off, so go for it, but, man. But thinking, think about Hitler for a minute and how, mm -hmm. you know, what if Hitler had not – there's a lot of what if that gets played in, in history, you know. Yes. What if Hitler had decided not to invade Russia? Hey, hey, what if he had been satisfied with – yeah. 
I'm a science fiction fan, so yeah, I, yeah. You see, I'm same familiar. Thing. <laughs> the alternative histories, right? If Donald Trump had said, "Mike Pence, you do all the policy stuff. I just want to do rallies and make money on my hotels yeah. and grift off the government as much as I can, and yes. from foreign governments." Yes. That's all I want to do. I want you, you know, Chris Christie has the cabinet all picked out. All right. They're all, they're all uh, agreed to by the Heritage Foundation. Right. <laughs> you know, they're all pre-approved. We're going to have a bunch of Bush dead enders in lower, lower than cabinet positions where no one will notice, mm-hmm. keeping the wheels running. Sure. Mitch McConnell gets whatever he wants. That's fine. I'll sign off on it. But I'm going to give speeches and sign meaningless executive orders that make me look like I'm doing something and give rallies. Right. And make money off my ho- my hotels and my businesses and my branding. And that's right. and, and you're not going to do shit about that. And they didn't do shit about that. So we're all set. I believe he would have been reelected this year. Well, there, there's there's a pandemic that sort of. Well, one has to wonder how, you know a Cheney style administration would have handled that. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I notice a lot of, of those dead ender Bush dead enders wearing masks. So, mm-hmm. you know, I self-preservation might have been a little different in a different way. One, one can write that a number of different ways. Donald Trump decided to make it a culture war, wearing a mask, a culture war, because that's all he knows how to do. Well, and, and now you've answered your own question, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this is all he knows how to do. Right, because this is all he knows how to do. And so all he, he knows how to do, as someone else said, is sweeps weeks spectacles. Right. Which and, is why he loved watching this on TV. Right. And, you and, know, and, Wednesday, and he loved it. Yeah, it was a great show. Great show. Yeah. Um, no, the the you're asking, the fundamental question you're asking, I think, is, what if Donald Trump weren't Donald Trump? Well, no, but I'm also asking, this is not so much a question about Donald Trump, mm-hmm. who we all know. You right. know, it, it's it's f- completely transparent who Donald Trump is. Yeah. What I'm wondering is about us and us meaning activists, Democrats, people who care about government working. Right. I was so grateful that Connor Lamb in his speech that started a fist fight, apparently on the House floor, um, <laughs> Put it very starkly between we want government to work more than they want to destroy it. That is the fight. That in yeah. one sentence is the fight right there. Right. And what we did is won 40 seats in the House. And, yep. and that made all the difference, by the way, yeah. in that terms of Trump Two, being able to do anything. 2018 was the difference. It was right. the difference. It had and nothing and to do I with- do believe he has, you know, the Trump administration and the loss in 2016, rather than storming <laughs> the Capitol building when we won the popular vote and lost the Electoral College, mm-hmm. we cried a lot, we drank a lot, and then we resolved. We right. marched and we resolved to change this yes. using the electoral process. And then we did it. We went out That's and right. did it. That's right. We knit hats, and then we resolve to to go out and change this. I have a very fashionable hat like a foot away from me right now. You do, so, that I, I made do. for you. Yes, right. you did. And I still wear with pride. Thank you. Um, but the fact that we did that isn't what destroyed Trump. I guess that's what I'm asking you. Is that what destroyed Trump, or did Trump destroy himself? Because the French oh, uh, resistance, the French resistance uh-huh. helped to defeat Hitler. But Hitler they defeated did. himself and Hitler's yeah. megalomania and, you know, his inability to just say, OK, I have enough. Is what what ended him. I remember having this discussion about about Hitler with somebody mm-hmm. who was I think they were like some of some neuro linguistic programming person mm. in the 70s or uh-huh. 80s, you know what? Uh-huh. And it was, can you imagine if Hitler had gotten a hold of neuro-linguistic programming? I'm like, yeah, he, he no. invented it. <laughs> yeah. So, no, yeah. 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 Well, he was a megalomaniac. He thought it could take over the world. He damn near did. He really near, so, did, so nearly did. Yeah. The idea that, you know, that that megalomaniacs don't succeed is not true. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, uh, suppose Nixon weren't Nixon. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. didn't, wasn't, wasn't so fucking paranoid that he, you know, tried to. He had to know what was going on in the Democratic National Committee. 
and he dispatched people and he was so paranoid about leaks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, 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 but he also knew where he could get a million dollars in 1972. Sure. Yeah. But that's to, the point. To pay off people, right? The point yeah. Is that he, he created his own doom because mm-hmm. he couldn't stop himself because he was who he was. Um, there is, there was no way to stop him from being Nixon. Um, mm-hmm. If, mm-hmm. if you can't, so if, if Donald, Donald Trump destroyed himself because Donald Trump is a product and remember he knocked off 16 opponents. Right. Right. And those 16 opponents were every bit as uh, along the spectrum of hideously offensive, racist, um, uh, hate mongering, well, that's exactly why I want to have this conversation, because if we don't learn from this, we're going to have Tom, President Tom Cotton. Yeah. And Tom Cotton's a smart Donald Trump. He is going to fill his administration with competent, you know, insane people. Right. People who yeah. have horrible policies, but also know how to hold on to power. Yeah. Yeah. And it won't be all about them. It will be all about getting the job done of dismantling the state. Well, let me put it this way. Mm-hmm. And this is, again, uh, um, Hitler did not take over Europe so that Hermann Goering could loot the art treasures of right. Paris. Yeah. That was just a thing that Goering got to do because mm-hmm. he went mm-hmm. along with this lunatic who who did take over you know, all of Europe and, and bid fair to take over you know, half the world. Um, and it was a great opportunity for misfits and scum and, and racists and lunatics to exercise their perversions. Mm-hmm. To murder as many people as uh, as they wanted to with impunity, to steal as much as they wanted to with impunity, to 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 reduce entire countries to to vassal states because fuck you, that's what I want. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. powered by the the paranoid rage and racism and um, conspiracy of the German people mm-hmm. who has right. been stabbed right. in the back by Jewish bankers yeah. and by communists, right. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, and yeah. without all of that cauldron boiling around and frankly, you know, 1500 years of anti-Semitism in Germany, starting mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Um, Martin Luther, all the way, mm-hmm. all the way up to, to Hitler. The whole blood libel thing. Absolutely. Yeah. That was old. That was and, old stuff. Yeah. Well, and people forget that the, the, I believe the second book by Martin Luther, it was Summa Theologica is the big one, but the second book by Martin Luther, if I'm not mistaken, was roughly translated the Jews and their lives. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. yeah, it, 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 this is a, it's a, it was a uh, person who came along and took advantage of long standing hatreds and fears and paranoia and economic collapse, et cetera, et cetera, and humiliation, all of which, some of which was perfectly true and legitimate and some of which wasn't. And he found a way to, to exercise his worst instincts with the help of a mob that was willing to give him absolute power. Mm-hmm. Now, what is the American mob's desire? They want to crush the left. They want they want to pay us back for for electing a black president, for I don't know a, a Obamacare, for their miserable fucking lies, for all the well, they want for, for for what they perceive to be our cultural and intellectual superiority right. or belief in that. Yeah. And so without yeah. shoveling shit into their skulls for 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump mm-hmm. never happens. You right. know, without Rush right. Limbaugh, there's no there's no Trump. Without absolutely. Newt Gingrich, there's no Trump. Without Lee Atwell, without Roger there's no Ailes, Trump. there's absolutely no Donald Trump without Roger Ailes. Which is yeah. why I'm I'm so pedantic about you can't let the media and our friends in the Never Trump movement draw a big partition across 2016 and say, this is when it all started. Everything before that is fucking off limits and we control the cameras now. So you can bitch all you want, liberals, but we're not going to talk about how we got to 2016. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was just mm-hmm. this, everything spontaneously began in this moment. And mm-hmm. that is an absolute guarantee of repeating the same mistakes mm-hmm. because you won't cure the problem. You will misdiagnose what happened. You will say, oh, if it all began in 2015, 2016, then Trump must be an anomaly. Right. And the, right. the Republican Party must have been healthy before that. And it just for m- magical reasons – that no one understands it suddenly 70 million people suddenly lost their fucking minds and became racist mouth breathing conspiracy yep. mongering nuts Not and no one can no one can explain why or how that happened but it just did and and if you take trump out then everything's fine mm-hmm. no if mm-hmm. you take hitler out of germany i'm sure things right. would have ended differently but you still would have had this roiling cauldron of anti-semitic rage absolutely and and a sense of grievance and a desire to take it out on somebody 
And right. somebody would have come along right. and pointed that gun somewhere. And, and that's what happened this week to what happened. our democracy. And I want to talk for just a minute about the kind of, um, I mean, the zeitgeist that is completely personified by Andrea Mitchell. Yes. Uh, watching them cover this live. Mm-hmm. And how dare they? Yeah, exactly. How dare they, you know, break into our Capitol building? Yes. I mean, the the thing is, I kept screaming Michigan, Michigan, Michigan at my TV because this happened to the Mich- at the Michigan State House months ago. <laughs> yes, it did. Months and months ago. Yes. And it was a story out there in the Midwest, in the hinterlands. It wasn't. This can't happen here, and they and really you. believe that this can't happen here. Oh, yeah. That the Capitol Police will stop it here. That there will there won't be. Uh, the angry mob, you know, it'll be controlled and it'll the way flags and stuff and, and so forth. But the mayor of DC knew that wasn't the case. Right. Everyone knew everyone outside of that, that cloistered universe mm-hmm. has known for decades yep. that, that these people are real and they're out there and this is who they are. And, this and they're is how violent. They, and they're violent. Yeah. And they will take up arms and they will scream and yell and they'll elect the worst people imaginable. And there is that scene. I know I've heard it before from, Nicholas and Alexandria, the the fall of the last Tsar of Russia, and the the um the the assassination of the royal family, and there's a moment, and and the movie is gradually stripping the Tsar of his possessions and power and privilege, yeah, and privilege. So, so we take away your your furniture, then we take away your 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 whatever, then we take away your home, then we put you in a train. Um, but there's a moment when I think the Tsar is interposing himself between him, his a guard and his daughter. Mm-hmm. And the, the 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 guard slaps him, and mm-hmm. everyone just freezes. You slapped the czar. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! And, and it was like unthinkable. This is a this is a person directly anointed by God. And however much you've taken away from him, they still had this belief that somehow this guy's got connections in heaven. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. don't slap the czar, and this guy did it, and nothing happened. Right. And it was like, oh shit! But it was that moment of surprise where. The, the the very deeply rooted aristocratic expectations mm-hmm. were, were violate were, hadn't, hadn't been violated by taking away his possessions and his home it said everything else but you slapped him and that was too much that was too mm-hmm. far there's mm-hmm. also a story I'm probably misremembering it of a guy sitting in a British club during I think World War one and and the a German aircraft flew overhead and dropped a bomb somewhere nearby and it broke a teacup. <laughs> And ah. he stood up and said, "Now the Bosch has gone too far." Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. it's it's yeah. that it's that immen- immense sense of Mrs. Alan Greenspan. That's who mm-hmm. she's married to. Her sense of enormous privilege. Yeah, that I have a, a completely protected universe. And you're absolutely right. The the thing that happened this week, and this was this was David Brooks's column, which I, I won't get into in any length, but it was, oh my God, they invaded this place that I consider to be sacred. Mm-hmm. The mob mm-hmm. came into the capital. And uh, why I, is it sacred? Is it sacred because it's the home of democracy, which is what David Brooks and all of them will tell you? Mm-hmm. Or no. is it sacred because it's the Beltway? It's, it's it's the center of their universe. And we and you know what proves that it's because it's the Beltway is Michigan, right? Because the sacred hallmark of democracy in Michigan is the Michigan State House, right? And you know, David Brooks didn't give a shit about that. Mm-hmm. It was it was not an affront to democracy. It was protesters. Something happened in a foreign country far away. Exactly. It didn't, it didn't involve him. It wasn't it? Wasn't people he knew? Because mm-hmm. you know David mm-hmm. Brooks' column was I visited the Capitol when I was fourteen and <gasps> the marble and the statues and and I've yeah. been there thousands of times. Well, what you mean is your personal friends with a whole bunch of people in the Capitol, right? And your right. friends. Had their very nearly came your friends came, and contacts and sources mm-hmm. and where you do your job has been violated and came awfully close to dying because right. there was a, the intent was to kill some people and that yep. was that was uh, aborted but it was oh my god you mean re- they slapped the czar but you can't slap yeah. the czar well yeah they did and this is what they have always been and this sense of of shock and and indignation and surprise. That they, they would that they MAGA would is far. a bunch of violent racists yeah. who will hurt you. Yeah, which is something we've been that, trying to tell you this for a long time. Yeah, well, and and we should probably get get to that. 
Um, yeah, let's let, let's get to our notes. I, I, want, I did. I, oh, go ahead. I do want to say that because we want to um, celebrate the good things that happened and not just yeah. you know, um, Tuesday, as I, as I said to you, felt more like Christmas Eve than Christmas Eve. You know, mm-hmm. are we on the nice list? Will we get two senators from Georgia? One or under the tree tomorrow? What will we get? What will we get? I don't know. Let's go to bed and find out tomorrow. And Wednesday felt like Christmas morning, even more than actual Christmas morning. We got the cool presents. Thank you, Stacy Claus. We got the <laughs> cool presents. <laughs> it didn't feel that way to me, Drift Class. I'm sorry. It didn't. I. It didn't feel like Christmas Eve at all to me. I believe that for the rest of my life, I will have PTSD. Oh, yeah. From 2016. Yeah, uh, no, I quite agree. And so I was sick to my stomach Tuesday mm-hmm. afternoon, mm-hmm. just turning it off, putting on episodes of House MD, which we're yeah. going to get to, <laughs> and knitting and right. not watching and not watching Steve. I can't watch Steve Kornacki on election no. night anymore. I no. can't read polls the day before. I can't do it because I am so primed for devastation and defeat. And that doesn't mean I'm not writing postcards to voters and making phone calls and doing whatever I need to do Mm -hmm. to help Democrats win. I'm going to be working on postcards to voters this weekend in a state house election in Alabama. That's what we're working on. There's a special election later in January. We're writing postcards for this progressive who we want to get into the state house in Alabama. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's what we're working on. And it's chop wood, carry water, folks. Don't stop. Find the next race. I suggest to our listeners that you all go look at the 2022 Senate calendar. Uh huh. Drift Glass and I were talking this morning about, you know, Joe Manchin and right. what a pain in the ass he is. Yes. And how do we fix that? And you suggested, well, maybe we can get 200,000 Californians to move to West Virginia. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. not going to happen. No. Uh, but what we can do is elect more Democrats to the Senate so we aren't desperate for Joe Manchin to be exactly. the tie, to break the tie. He can go and become a Republican, which is what he wants to be anyway. Yeah. Well, whatever he wants to do, when we don't need him anymore, that's a good day. Well, and and we, and we I, I wrote this morning a draft of the voter turnout prayer, which goes as follows. <laughs> oh, Lord, from now until the end of days, please make reminders to Democrats that they have to turn out to vote in every damn election as targeted and relentless as reminders that my car's warranty is apparently in imminent danger of expiring. There you Amen. go. Amen. Amen. I did feel wonderful on Wednesday. Once the election was called, I felt very mm-hmm. good. And it did felt Christmas date ish to me right up yeah. until the yeah. insurrection thing happened. Yeah. yeah. And it was uh, something else entirely, but I, that it, it, one came so close on the heels of the other. Mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. It was important mm-hmm. that let's separate out these two and not, let these two memories co-mingle because, you know, a very good thing and positive thing happened on Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right. Uh, and uh, and I, I do think we need to put on our fancy dress on January 20th and yeah. break out some sparkling grape juice or champagne or wine or whatever it is you want to raise a glass, your coffee, mm-hmm. and uh, post a picture of our in- inauguration ball, you know, yeah. <laughs> from yeah. on Twitter. Um, because it, we should celebrate. We should we celebrate should. the win. We should. We got a letter from a listener. Listener Paul wrote us. Mm-hmm. I guess he wrote you. From listener Paul. Good morning, DG. I was all set to write a happy email about the Democratic sweep in Georgia. However, I just wanted to draw your attention to something I saw on MSNBC in the 9 a.m. hour with Hallie and Stephanie. Two members of the Problem Solvers Caucus, oh goody, were being interviewed. Needless to say, they were all about the need to heal and turn the page. Stephanie Rule tried to pin down Tom Reed on what ought to be done with the Republican arsonists like Hawley, Cruz, and the numerous Republican traitors from the House. Resignation, censure, or expulsion. Reed's answer was telling. Voters will hold them accountable in elections, as if the Alabama voters who support Brooks or the constituents who keep sending Matt Gates back to Washington or Cruz or Hawley supporters will ever turn their backs on these public servants. So there is a limit to what Republicans will do to hold their members accountable when bedrock principles of American political culture are in peril. Two of your favorite criticisms, down the memory hole, turn the page, and phony principles hiding how disingenuous Republicans are and how soon to be aided and abetted by some Democrats. Have a good show today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, those are. And those let's are- let's remember back back all of that up to 
the point at which MSNBC bookers decided that two members of the Problem Solvers Caucus should be on the 9 a.m. hour this morning, Friday. Absolutely. Friday, January 8th, 2021, MSNBC Suits had a booker put on two members of the Problem Solvers Caucus. Well, I, I That's just, a choice. I just glanced over my shoulder, and it's the 3.30 hour on Friday. Mm-hmm. And who do I see but Tim Miller from The Bulwark on <laughs> MSNBC. So, you know, you can't swing a yeah. dead cat at MSNBC without uh, hitting – one of the problems with the with news, which is it's not mm-hmm. news anymore. It is a mm-hmm. it is a reputation laundromat where we just yeah. keep bringing in the worst people imaginable, people who got us to this place, or people who want to build a lifeboat on on stage, and forgetting that a whole bunch of other people um, really should be in the spotlight, really should have the microphones, because the people you're talking to were the people who brought you this fucking mess and who want to enable the people who brought you this fucking mess. I want to thank uh, people who responded to a tweet I sent this week. Uh, I don't listen to very many podcasts, and I decided to listen to a lifestyle podcast this week that I thought would be interesting. And this podcast did not start the content of their podcast until seven minutes and 49 seconds into the podcast, I swear. And I just asked my, you know, my Twitter followers, is this typical? Because my God, mm-hmm. you know, they were selling a course that they were doing and they oh, were yeah. doing all kinds of affiliate links. And, and I don't criticize anyone trying to make a living off of their podcast. I get nope. it. But, uh, you know, <laughs> we do this as a labor of love, and I appreciate you guys supporting us very, very much so that we don't have to do that. We can just start right in. Um, that's that's all I'm going to say about that. But Oh, and, and I also wanted to say two of our listeners sent us this week 1% of their COVID relief check to be a one percenter. <laughs> one person sent $6 and another sent $18 because they had three people in their family. Oh. And said that, and both of them came up with the same idea of we're going to send you 1% of our COVID check. Congratulations. <laughs> I thought that was just charming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's let's re- talk about some stuff. You have a long list here of things to discuss. Do we just want to read through this or how well, do you want to handle it? I, I want to skip through but not skip over the fact that Congress confirmed Joe Biden's presidential victory uh, after a violent mob tried to stop them from doing that at the capital of the, of the government. And it's Stacey Abrams, John Ossoff, Raphael Warnock, and a whole bunch of volunteers um, really did shift the balance of power in the United States government, which is no small I, thing. I'm not afraid to mention, too, that Ossoff and Warnock had two of the worst opponents, yes. morally, practically, and you know politically. They were bad opponents, really bad. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm looking forward to uh, how Ossoff and Warnock communicate with Georgia voters and keep them motivated to continue this progress. I'm sure that's going to happen. And I loved how Stacey Abrams was willing to spread the the handbook right. on how to do this to other states. She's now working on that, and that's just great. Um, I did want to mention that I, I do listen to lots of stuff and I do you listen to a lot of podcasts. Yes, um, you do. The, the Bulwark, um, uh, which I have mentioned once or twice on our podcast, uh, has changed their official tagline to what do you think? What did you think was going to happen? Which Lord. is kind of hilarious. Uh, and I do want to I don't I do want to talk about it a little bit because the most repeated phrase I heard this week by far from pundits and from uh, suddenly reformed Republicans and people who have been out of the government for two minutes uh, is, as I've been warning you for the past six weeks or the past month or the past year or the past four years, especially the past four years, and then they sort of mm-hmm. do a little victory, victory dance. We warned you. We told you this was coming. Did people listen to us? No, they did not because they suddenly got Jesus two minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. I don't object to that. Um, I, I think that they should take, uh, a, a hike all the way to the back of the line <laughs> and do some hard work in the wilderness for five or 10 or 15 years before they get back up to the front of the line. But what I, what's important to note for me is the repetition of the phrase, the past four years, 
Mm-hmm. The past four years, mm-hmm. these past few mm-hmm. years, these past four years. I got an article passed along to me from Vox suggesting that I, poor little drift glass, might get a, a, a byline someday. And I laughed and said, no, that's never, ever going to happen. But I looked through the article, a good article in Vox by a good liberal. And it, it was like in 2017, in 2018, these past few years, like what happened to anything that before that? Oh, that that just is gone now. Mm-hmm. That's just mm-hmm. gone now. And the reason it's gone and now the is- the fact that Bush lied us into war is not a gone. thing, it's right? Gone. It's all gone. The, everything that led up to Trump is now vanished. And it's still there. I mean, you can look it up. You can, you can talk about it like I do rather incessantly sometimes. Uh, and so the mystery is not that it disappeared because it didn't go away. The mystery is what is the motive- for all of these people to keep pretending that 2015 prior to that simply doesn't exist. And it's like, oh, it's the same reason the same people pretended the Bush administration didn't exist after mm-hmm. Obama came into mm-hmm. office because mm-hmm. they are fucking complicit in the horrible right. shit that went on. And they and, and and being complicit, having to atone for what they did, explain for what they did, apologize for what they did to people that they offended, like me, fucks up their whole scam. Yeah. But they have to be the prophets, the, the genius prophets who saw this coming, man. We saw this coming. And there is now, as I mentioned last week, a reserved five to ten minute period in every Bulwark podcast where they sneer at people who are building their lifeboats now. Oh, you just came to Jesus now? I, I came to Jesus two weeks ago. What sort, of, yeah. what sort of idiot are you that you didn't see this happening in, a minute ago? And that they pretend that 2015 is year zero. And maybe our listeners who ha- have – budget experience or government budget experience cannot can explain this have we paid for the iraq war yet has has the republican party found the funding for the iraq war yet i'm just Uh, wondering if we're going to talk about budget deficits and so forth and so on the total total cost of the iraq war um in terms of the follow-on and wounded and taking care of people Mm -hmm. and the actual Mm -hmm. war etc comes to i think close to two trillion dollars mm-hmm and, mm-hmm. you know, if somebody had taken $2 trillion out of my wallet, I would have noticed. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how you pay for that, whether you, whether it's funny money, whether it's all been pushed forward, whether it's been plowed into the national debt, which probably is exactly what happened. And now we're paying interest on the Iraq war debt that we, et cetera. But it, it, it's simply nothing we talk about because we don't talk about any aspect of the Iraq war anymore. Right. Ever. It, it simply and so disappeared. We, and and talking about the deficit the minute Joe Biden puts his hand on the Bible, we won't be talking about the Trump tax cuts at all as far as Republicans are concerned. No, which, it's just socialism, 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 yeah. right? Which brings us to the cosmological constant, which is a, actually a true thing now. It, it actually turned out to be correct, but not in the way it originally was. Originally, it was Albert Einstein's, the, the implication of Einstein's formulas about how the universe was created and what was going on offended and scared him. It was it, his own formula predicted an expanding universe, and he found that to be extremely offensive. <laughs> so he invented a completely fictional numerical function to plug into his own formula to explain the universe the way he wanted it to explain a static universe that wasn't expanding in all directions at once. And many years later, he sort of had to sheepishly admit that that was just bullshit, that he didn't want the universe to be the way it was. And so he made up this thing that explained why it wasn't. That is what's happening in the media, in uh, the Beltway media, in pundit land, in, um, in, especially in, among the Never Trumpers who all have uh, paid gigs now at The Atlantic. Uh, Tom Nichols this week is now a, a paid contributing writer at The Atlantic. Um, David Brooks still has this column. All the same people have factored in this, this cosmological constant to explain why things are the way they are. And that is nothing before 2015 exists. Mm-hmm. Nothing. The nothing escalator before the, ride was the beginning of the it. problems for the that's Republican it. Party. Yeah. So if, if say a disreputable, dirty hippie liberal like me happens to remember that 2014, David Brooks proudly announced that the Republican Party had cured itself of its um, Sarah Palin problem. It was doing just fine. <laughs> that that never happened, Blue Gal. And if it did happen, there is nobody on this earth who's going to put me on a stage with a microphone opposite David Brooks and ask him, didn't you just say in 2014 the Republican Party was doing fine and everything was great? Didn't you fucking say that like months before Donald Trump showed up? Isn't it amazing that they found a reason to put Sarah Palin on television this week? Hannity had her on to talk about how Antifa was was infiltrating, you know, that this was Antifa doing this, not 
<laughs> and and she wants to start a third party. I think we ought to call it oh. the Palin Party or Palin PP. Party. A PP party, yeah. Maybe I'll call it the Patriot <laughs> Party, the PP PP PP. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I I was I will now take a moment and say as an aside, when I was writing yesterday, I, I had Fox News on with the volume down oh, over yeah. my shoulder, and uh, just because I was like, I wonder what it's like to have a horrifying dream out of which you cannot wake. Mm-hmm. And I watched the Laura Ingram show, yeah, and and at the top of the hour, she promised she was going to bring on Ben Dominic. Dominic <laughs> from the Federals. Say, Ooh, Ben's coming on. That's great. You know, I love Ben Dominic. And I really do appreciate the fact that ABC and MSNBC just saved his career back when he was on the ropes so that we can have him in our life now. Um, so I'm watching these three deranged women talk about how Joe Biden is the divisive one. And Donald Trump just wants to unite people and be fair and lovely. I'm like, that's great. We can all agree to that. Joe Biden's evil. Donald Trump's good. <laughs> Got it. You seem to have a handle on it, Laura Ingram. And your one commercial from the pillow guy. Right. Um, and that's your life now. That's great. Well, so, and, and then the in house commercials. Yeah, she's, well, yeah. got, she's got all of the, um, but you're going to get into Fox that. Nation. I think. Yeah. Fox Nation. Fox Nation ad. Nation, yeah. And apparently, again, the volume turned down. Apparently, on Fox Nation, if you sign up, you get a free virtual tour of the catacomb where Judge Janine keeps the vats of baby's blood that she soaks herself in <laughs> just to keep them decomposing. <laughs> That That's, sounds like a whole Q, QAnon thing, yeah, though. Well, they had her <laughs> wandering through a castle, pointing at things excitedly with big well, – apparently, uh, maybe it was wine. Jean- I don't Jean- know. Janine Pirro is actually doing the thing that Q, QAnon accuses Hillary Clinton of doing. Is that oh, what you're suggesting? It's life, <laughs> the lifestyles of the rich and famous and undead. And she's just pointing at exciting <laughs> things in the castle. Going, Join Fox Nation. So that, yeah. I'm like, this is very exciting. So, But where's Ben? No, no, no. We don't have Ben. Who we do have is Glenn Greenwald. <laughs> who, who is like sitting and rocking and smirking like I am. You're never going to be rid of me. I am like third stage syphilis, man. I, you can't get rid of me for anything. Like, oh, this is just like a bonus episode. You know, there was that, that Monty Python album that had two tracks on it, one inside the other, and one day it skips, and you notice, oh, there's a whole separate record in here. It was like, oh, we get Glenn Greenwald. This is great. What do you have to say, Glenn? And Glenn was all about how Michelle Obama is a jackbooted Orwellian thug who's trying to silence Donald Trump because she's black and she's a woman and Glenn Greenwald hates those things. So it, it gave him a chance to be a misogynist and a racist. I want to make it clear that, that the topic of Glenn Greenwald's conversation with Laura Ingram last night was Michelle Obama. Yes, it was. Absolutely was. And it was her. A day after insurrectionists violently attempted to take over the Capitol building yes. Glenn Greenwald is on Laura Ingram to talk about Michelle Obama. They're both nodding their heads like those little barbershop birds. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, isn't she horrible? Isn't she a monster? Oh, yes, she is. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm like, okay, this is just bonus. Now, now, where's Ben Dominic? Oh, no, not Ben. Who, who, who's our next guest? It's Ken Starr. You remember Ken Starr, the guy mm-hmm. who, uh, the second special prosecutor who the Republicans hired to get rid of Bill Clinton because he had a blowjob and lied about it? And what was Ken Starr there to say? That trying to get rid of a president for for partisan frivolous reasons is the worst crime imaginable. It's the most (laughs) terrible thing you could possibly imagine. I'm like, I am hallucinating. I'm having some sort of breakdown because that can't possibly. Oh, it's Ken Starr. Yay, Ken Starr. And it really was almost like a loyalty test for the viewers. Mm -hmm. Like, are Mm -hmm. you willing Mm -hmm. for me to shove this thing this far up your ass? And the answer is, of course, because we don't remember Clinton. We don't remember Bush. We, we barely remember Obama. We know there was a black guy. And we know he has a wife because Glenn Greenwald just mentioned her. So that's cool. So Ken Starr is Ken Starr. And he's doing his taking down a president, trying to impeach a president, trying to get rid of a president for, for doing nothing. He's just the worst sin imaginable. Like, that's great. And then they brought on Ben Dominic, who was swollen, puffy. So I assume he's been working out a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. in, 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 uh, in in the Wuhan hoax quarantine that we're all suffering under. And he's just a beast to doing that. And that was like 20 minutes just glancing over my shoulder. Like, oh, my goodness, who's next? And I just, I'm like, will Diamond and Silk be on next? Yeah, who's coming? really. Will, will the rotting corpse of Lee Atwater be paraded across the stage? I don't know. Maybe because anything's possible on Fox News. And I thought, this is just what these people look at Every fucking day. This is mm-hmm. what they let mm-hmm. Fox News crap into their skulls every day. They call day. it the news. And when, when Glenn Greenwald and Ken Starr aren't enough, they turn over to Newsmax, who are even crazier. And there's 74 million of them. And that's the problem. 
So yeah. the and here's the cosmological constant thing, and also Dr. House. Mm -hmm. I want to mention Dr. Gregory House. My wife loves Dr. Gregory House. I well, he looks a little bit like my husband, folks. Little, little it's little not house. not complicated why I like Gregory you House. Know, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's we'll we'll talk about that in Professor Left <laughs> after dark. After dark, after dark. <laughs> but, but Dr. Gregory House is a big old whiteboard. And on that whiteboard, he draws all the symptoms. He writes all the symptoms. And you, 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 the diagnosis has to explain all the symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so on the whiteboard, we have, okay, 74 million Republicans are insane. They elected a racist lunatic. They stood by that racist lunatic. Fox News is this way. Onan is that way. Newsmax is this way. The commentators are this way. The pundits are continuing to pretend, oh, both sides, both sides, both sides. It's not really that bad. He changed his tone. What explains all this? And the answer we keep coming up with from our Never Trump friends is that in 2015, spontaneously, everything changed. Or here's a better explanation. In 1994, Newt Gingrich told the Republican Party to call liberals traitors every time they opened mm -hmm. their mouth. Anti-family. Anti-family. Yeah. In 1988, Rush Limbaugh was syndicated across the country. Mm -hmm. In 1980, Ronald Reagan got rid of the Fairness Doctrine. There was a guy named Lee Atwater who got George H.W. Bush elected. Maybe these preceded all of the things that happened in 2015 and actually caused them to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in, in the one case, you have to accept a magical, instantaneous, mass transformation of 74 million people from normal, healthy, upright Republicans that David Brooks was, was trusting to run the country in 2014 into a mob of bigots and imbeciles and traitors and lunatics – like that. No. Now, Rush Limbaugh spread like COVID into certain segments of white America. Yeah. And, who are, and who anyone are that has a family member that they have lost to QAnon knows what that's like, knows what it's like to lose somebody mm -hmm. to insanity. It's 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 a very sad. I, I don't want we're sitting here chirping about it. But seriously, it's, it's this, is a, this is a tragedy for our country. It is. It is. And, and I don't know how we fix it after after this week. Well, there there has been there have been a number of people who got real close to the to what I'm saying and then shied away from it. Mm -hmm. It's like, but but mm -hmm. how do you how do you fix seventy million people who think mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Well it will heal the nation. You know, the yeah. people yeah. like, no, yeah. no, no, no. You you do it first of all by by reciting to yourself the voter turnout prayer. <laughs> Over, <laughs> yeah. Vote, yeah. You vote yeah. all the time and all the time. And you confront them at the grassroots level. You don't yeah. let them into your head or your life. You cut yeah. them out. You don't spend money at their businesses. You don't interact with them on Facebook. You treat them as pariahs. Yeah. And, and sorry, but that's because they are. And, and maybe they'll stop and maybe they won't, but they'll be out of your fucking Well, and, and Junior Dude said to me this morning, mm -hmm. and he's home and for just a couple more days, and he said, what happened on Wednesday is going to be on every Democratic ad yeah. for the next 10 years. That you can't, you, you vote, you're voting for this. Mm -hmm. You're voting for the QAnon people who, you know, spread human feces all over the House of Representatives. Now, I hope he's right. What I predict uh, is going to happen is that we will enter a new golden age of both siderism. <laughs> well, there's, go there's going to be a very strong attempt at that. Mm -hmm. I think we've had an impact. Mm -hmm. In that regard, oh, at least, at least, you know, among some of the smarter corners of the blogosphere, we've had an impact. Mm -hmm. uh, both sides don't is a thing. It is. And, it will and be a thing. I was impressed yesterday mm -hmm. with how quickly Dana Bash started trending on Twitter. Yep. Which is where, <laughs> by the way, the Washington press corps hangs out. That right. is the bar where they hang out. So you actually are reaching when that when it turns to trending. Uh huh. That's that's a bell that rings that that those folks hear, and when she decided to say that Trump has a new tone, because he had to read a hostage message, right? You know, uh, oh look, it's Trump's new tone, it's and tone. and immediately, mm -hmm. immediately she was shut down. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, that's that's a thing. That what, is a change. What you from... mean is what you mean, Blue Gal, let's be clear, is mm -hmm. the cancel the 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 woke mob cancel culture mm -hmm. silenced mm -hmm. that good woman as she was trying to tell the truth. <laughs> the American people. See, I can do this. I can play you that can. role. It is, it. It is all I have to do again, like to, to quote uh um um nothing mm -hmm. I can't name of the movie, Mike uh, 
Jack Nicholson. I, mm-hmm. I imagine uh, I imagine Democrat, and I take away reason and accountability. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> as good as it gets. As good as it gets. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, right. and I knock off about forty IQ points, and it's easy. I can, I can, I really can parody the right yeah. to the point where it is indistinguishable from the right. Why anyone with a good conscience would do that? But that really is what Tucker Carlson does for a living. Yeah, Tucker Carlson no, that, fucking well knows that, better. Josh Hawley knows better. Ted Cruz yeah. knows. Oh better. yeah. Josh Hawley is having a very bad week, and I'm glad he's having a bad week. But you know what? The voters of Missouri should have known. They elected a white nationalist. What did they expect? Getting back to your original thing about about Hitler and Trump, and, mm-hmm. and yeah, this is this can't be unratcheted. The yeah. people got used to being told that their paranoia is patriotism and their and their mm-hmm. raising racism. And they're patriots, right, right. right. They got used to that. They got the, the dosage they need to maintain that high is very, very um, intense at this point. Yeah. Oh, they're now gonna, it is, yeah. And, and, and they're this, turning off Fox and they're turning off specific shows on Fox. That's the amazing thing. That's something that Rachel Maddow points out whenever people ask her about competition with Fox News. Yeah. Which is, you know, Fox News viewers, if that's where you're getting your news, they've convinced you that that's the only place you can go. Right. There's no other place. No Liberals, other place. I watch Fox News every day. You you have Fox News on from time to time. I do. Because we're interested in peering over that fence and seeing what's going on. But if mm-hmm. you go on, on Twitter or you follow Parlor Takes to watch what's going on on Parlor, um, the number of people saying, oh, I've stopped watching blank on right. fox mm-hmm. i stopped watching Stuart varney Stuart varney's dead to me now Stuart varney's dead to me now right, right. there's i only watch mark levin <laughs> right. mark levin and lou dobbs are on, the only things i ever watch anymore and they're choosing their news source based on how it feels we talked about that before i, I do want to mention the the blowback from that which we saw today and yesterday it was uh-huh. lindsey graham and and newt gingrich being screamed at by mm-hmm. Trump supporters, by Republicans. Lindsey Graham being yeah. told in an airport, you know, you're a traitor and I'm going to hound you for the rest of your goddamn life. Newt Gingrich the same way. The same way. This is this is the monster they built and has come to destroy them. And this is this was what we well, told because you. because Newt Gingrich praised Mike Pence for right. his his loyalty to the Constitution. And so like Stuart Varney. Which is Varney, not what they want to hear. Like so, Stuart Varney, you're dead to me now, Newt. You're dead to me now, Newt. Yes. Newt, you anyway. built this. That's yeah. the thing, Newt. Yeah. Karma. Karma. Anyway, you, you were gonna ask I just wanted to ask you, has the fever broken? No, I'm afraid it hasn't. You know, um, <laughs> uh, Wednesday. I, I thought David Brooks said the fever has broken He now. said it might have broken. He said it might. <laughs> and I spared I – sp- well, I didn't really spare. I, I wrote a little thing about David Brooks uh, today about his – because he – I would say he wrote a really big – um, treacly saccharine column about uh, turning the corner and stuff, but he didn't really. His his column is actually worse than that. He wrote a big treacly tweet that implied that his column was a you know a, we've turned the corner, which is sort of it. But it, it was just a mishmash of gobbledygook. You know, his mm-hmm. memories when he was fourteen, and you know, there's there's fury and and danger in the human soul, and we rely on these legislators, all five hundred thirty five of them, to turn the corner and make America great again, and. I just put that on the pile of the dozens and dozens of identically wrong columns that David mm-hmm. Brooks has written about turning the corner over the last two decades. Yeah, every time the Republican Party shits the bed, he starts writing this way. He does. And he either yeah. posits a third party, which is, you know, mm-hmm. which was going to be the McCain Lieberman party, as I recall. <laughs> um, and back when back when uh, Ned Lamont was running. Yeah. And and Tom DeLay was a thing. Remember Tom DeLay? I do. And, yeah. and the net, he was on Dancing with the Stars. Right. Well, and, and David Brooks said, there's Tom DeLay and there's the net roots Tom DeLay's on the left. <laughs> and like, and this is like two members of Congress? Yeah. No, no. This, this was Daily Caller. senior Cole. leader in the Daily Congress? Is that- <laughs> These are bloggers. This was me he's writing about. Yeah, I was going to say, Marcos Melissas was never a senior leader no. in the Congress of the but, United States. Because David Brooks is <laughs> fetish. The, the thing that feeds his family is lying about both sides being wrong. He and had equal. To, and yeah. the threat yeah. was equal to Tom DeLay, and it was yeah. the net roots Tom DeLay. And so he, <laughs> he invented a third party, the McCain-Lieberman party, who <laughs> believes in their country and loves America and kisses their mother on both cheeks before they go out and play. And <laughs> and he's been writing the same fucking column. And I wonder, 
is this just porn for the Schultzberger family? Does he just yeah. like write sure this in the door and you just hear wacka, 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 wacka every time? <laughs> is that I mean, because that would explain speaking it. Of, speaking of professional left after dark, that wacka, wacka, wacka is going to be a meme, I tell hey, you. I try to uh, meme it up. I, I, I wanted to uh, – applaud you drift glass for yeah. your multiple posts yesterday noticing that the departing trump cabinet each one of them is a resistance hero now oh, they're all heroes all blue gal mark uh, mike mick mulvaney betsy devos john kelly john bolton and who knows today all heroes all of them resistance heroes and you know why blue gal you know why let me tell you why because the rules are now these are not my rules the, i objected to these rules but i was overruled <laughs> by the liberal high council the rules are, if you say a mean thing about Donald Trump, you're a member of the resistance, and we are not allowed to ask you anything about anything that you've ever done before. You're an ally now. So now John Kelly's an ally, and Betsy DeVos is an ally, and Mick Mulvaney's Hope a Hicks. hero. Hope Hicks, who Hope left Hicks. and came back to work for Donald oh, Trump, yeah. and, but is now, now thinking, she's thinking about leaving. So she's a resistance hero. Oh, like Glenn Beck, who, who became a never-Trumper, and then he was a hero to us all, and then he became a not-never-Trumper and loves Trump, and then he became, oh, no, no. And then, I'm sure he'll become a never-Trumper again, and he'll be a hero again. Absolutely. Because, Whatever it takes to have the paychecks roll in. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, and alert listener Kevin notes that the Wall Street Journal is also now a resistance hero. They are. And <laughs> he wrote, he wrote, the good news is the Wall Street Journal editorial board signed off on Mr. Trump ending his presidency pronto. The bad news is it's full of crap, like assuming Donald Trump is reasonable. Republicans want to make peace with Democrats. And the 2019 impeachment was wrong, 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 et cetera. So, you know, both sides, Blue Gal, really both sides. Both sides. And finally... Our angel nerd Tammy is in Twitter jail. Language in, in endurance vile in the uh, in the parlance of the Middle Ages, um, and we wish her well. And we're going to send her a, a file cake and a carton I, of cigarettes. I take it she she got mad at some Trumpers apparently. I think she was and, correcting people, uh, probably people with blue checks, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, who were conservatives who were lying about things, and she might have gotten a little heated in that. And then she go, went to jail. I, I I hope and pray she was in a different cell block than Donald Trump, who was also sent to Twitter. <laughs> He's also in Twitter yeah. jail, and he's uh, permanently sort of suspended as long as he's president from uh, Instagram and Facebook as well. Well, that brings us to the national news. Shall we go through the it national does. news? Let's do a news roundup. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer both called on Mike Pence, or Miguel Penso, as he's now known, uh, <laughs> to invoke the 25th Amendment to immediately remove that son of a bitch from office. That son of a bitch told aides and advisors that he wants to pardon himself and his kids before leaving office. Yeah, my pinned tweet from the day after the 2016 election. Remember Drift Glass's pinned tweet, folks, um, from very 2016. Seriously. Yeah, Very seriously, 4,000 Americans died of COVID yesterday. 4,000 Americans died of negligent homicide from that son of a bitch. And, you know, the fact that Donald Trump was sent to Twitter jail and banned from Facebook and Instagram is because this is a communist country now, it's by the way. Country. It's, a, it's a communist country. Um, also, just, remember that they are completely freaking out about D.C. statehood. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that really does tip the balance of power. That's the stake through the heart. We've got to get that done. Oh, for a it, lot of reasons, but not the least of which is that then the governor of D.C. can call out the National Guard when this shit happens. Right. And as opposed to waiting for Donald Trump to do right. the right thing, which is never, ever. Right. Or whoever. Also, right. Whether or not successful, I want to have that fight. I want to hear mm-hmm. a bunch of Republicans right. say, explain why hundreds of thousands of African-Americans should not be allowed to vote in federal elections. I want right. to hear that and should not be represented in Congress and should not be represented in the Senate. I want to hear them explain that to the American people. Um just a reminder, there were 18 attempted calls from the White House to the Georgia Secretary of State's office before that son of a bitch got through and tried to bully and threaten the Secretary of State into shredding the election results uh, in Georgia. Well, and the Secretary, Georgia Secretary of State made sure his attorney was on the call and that and, it was being recorded. And there was so, a tape work going to wanting. So there's, yeah, you know, yeah. article of impeachment number one right there. Yep. The Republican rot runs all the way down. A uh, Democratic state senator certified by the state of Pennsylvania as receiving the most votes, because that counts, folks, mm-hmm. was denied his seat in the Pennsylvania State Senate in a raucous swearing-in day at the state capitol in Harrisburg. Senate Republicans who hold the majority refused to let Pennsylvania Senator Jim Brewster of McKeesport take the oath of office. 
the the reason was that he, although Jim Brewster had the most votes and his election had been certified, his Republican opponent had not conceded yet. Because that's and what apparently counts. that's all you have to do mm-hmm. is refuse to concede. And if you're in the majority in Pennsylvania, then they just won't seat you. Mm hmm. When Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, a Democrat, came to Brewster's defense, the Republicans removed him as presiding officer. So, you know, this can't happen. This can't happen. It won't happen in our precious D.C. when it happens in Pennsylvania or Michigan or anywhere else along the state, in any state that's not in the Beltway. Mm-hmm. It's it's news from a foreign country, like you say. Um, in the, uh, in the, that age, well, category, uh, mm-hmm. remember Jim Comey? Yeah. Everybody yeah. Knows Jim Comey. Two days before the incel inter insurrection, which is trademark me, um, <laughs> Jim Comey warned that the next U S attorney general under Joe Biden should not quote, pursue a criminal investigation of Donald Trump, no matter how compelling the roadmap left by special counsel, Robert Mueller, or how powerful the evidence, because Jim Comey is all about defending the, the aristocratic rights of powerful men. We're powerful Republican men. Yeah, powerful Republican yep. men. Damn right. Police say that the U.S. pharmacist who tried to ruin the COVID vaccine doses was also a Trump supporter and conspiracy theorist. Yeah, shocking. Uh, according to a report from the Washington Post, pro-Trump attorney Sidney Powell has been hit with a one point three billion with a B billion law, dollar lawsuit for lying about Dominion voting systems. Papers were filed early today by the voting machine firm alleging that the attorney, who was representing outgoing President Donald Trump at the time, indulged in, quote, wild and demonstrably false claims that the company participated in stealing the election from the president. Oopsie. So they get to sue, that that corporation gets to sue, but Hillary Clinton does not. That's right. On the morning of January 6th, Ginny Thomas, wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, endorsed the protest demanding that Congress overturn the election, then sent her love in all caps to the demonstrators who violently overtook the cap who violently overtook the Capitol several hours later. She has not posted since and she's also deleted her Facebook page. It's time for her husband to resign. On Fox News, Chris Wallace warned that, quote, for Trump to be removed from office, either from within his administration or by Congress, it would only enrage his supporters further. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. We wouldn't want that. So sad. Yeah, we should definitely bow to the whims of violent psychotics. That's uh, believe the message from Chris Wallace. (laughs) Simon & Schuster dropped a book by Josh Hawley. His his running for president book, which all candidates for president must publish, Mm -hmm. uh, because it disapproves of Hawley's role in the Capitol insurrection, or as I call it, the mega sedition riot. (laughs) A decision which has nothing to do with the First Amendment. In response, Hawley, who went to Yale Law School and clerked for Justice Roberts, went on a howling, unhinged Orwellian woke mob rant against the cancel culture commie left and hit the denial of his First Amendment rights. Which is very exciting for me. Because now that I know that, that I have a First Amendment right to have a book published by Simon & Schuster, <laughs> I'm definitely going to write a book. It'll be a You're shitty definitely book. Gonna, you, no, you just need to, to let them publish a book. You don't have to actually write it. That's true. Josh Hawley wasn't going to write that book. Would you like to do the next <laughs> one? Because it's by your TV husband, Eli yeah, Mistal. Yeah, my TV husband, Ellie Mistal, mm-hmm. pointed out how close the insurrection came to succeeding in monkey-wrenching the election. People don't fully appreciate how close these people came to victory. If they'd gotten hold of the boxes holding the EC certifications, even for a bit, they would have broken the chain of custody. They'd have a colorable argument for demanding states recertify. Who knows what shenanigans Trump, Hawley, Cruz, not to mention Rudy Giuliani, had planned. Should the rioters have achieved this illegal delay in the certification of the election? The quick-thinking staffers who took the boxes are literally the people who stopped the coup. Mm-hmm. That is so important. It was it was young women grabbing those boxes mm-hmm. and taking them with them that stopped that coup from happening. Amen. It saved, it saved us. Saved it saved us. Yep. Um, in, there was a lot of local news, and I'll go through it quickly, but it's all interrelated. Um, well, there, and I, I love how your visits to the the deep well of local Facebook – Oh, it's have been a, very fruitful this week. It, yeah. It's a trip. 
but it it confirms everything we say on this podcast. I don't yeah. believe me. Yeah. I, I have a, a meat thermometer that I jab into the right wing locally frequently just to make sure that I, I have it, the temperatures right. And I'm, I'm mm-hmm. almost I'm almost never wrong. Uh, Springfield resident Andy Van Meter, who's also the Republican chairman of the Sangamon County Board, said, I think it's really important to mention that because yeah. we are not talking about local people who do not have a public position. No, we're not outing anyone locally that we know to say no. to make fun of them or to point out anything. These people are speaking in their official capacity for the most part, or certainly represent themselves as being in official capacity. So, I want to be clear about that. We're not yeah. trying to punched down in any way no, so no this was in the this yeah. was the chairman of the sangamon county board who was in the local paper saying this yeah so right right it's not exactly a big old secret um but he said society was to blame for the violence in washington dc <laughs> society is to blame okay Officer i blame Chris. society that that's wow. uh, Right out of uh, Repo Man, right? Let's go get sushi and don't pay. I'm down on my knees. You know, it, it, <laughs> no one likes a person with a social disease. You know, it's, 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 the, it's the crazy bullshit excuse that every conservative accuses liberals of pulling out of their back yeah. pocket. Yeah. Um, yeah. He equated Wednesday's protests with the violent protests in Chicago and elsewhere that he said were condoned in the 2020 following the deaths of black people at the hands of police. Because, yeah, they're entirely the same thing. People protesting the murder of black, innocent black civilians by cops is exactly the same. Well, that's what Lindsey Graham said yesterday, too. Of course. Well, this is the point. Van Meter said that Trump has to accept defeat. But Van Meter said he doesn't blame the president for what happened in Washington. He was not leading the violence, Van Meter said. Yes, he was. In the same way that Osama bin Laden wasn't flying the planes, was he? (laughs) No, he was just in the back telling people what to do, inciting them to do things, which is why he's living a happy, comfortable life in Pakistan, undisturbed by anyone. Okay, let's get through these last few quickly. Uh, Um, Local wingnut social media here insists that this is all Antifa. You know, they're being trained well, and they have pictures to prove it. The picture they have was from another nutso rally and was carefully cropped, so the guy's I'm with QAnon sign wasn't visible. When this was brought to the attention of local wingnut social media, they went into, well, of course, the so-called fact checkers are in on the conspiracy mode. Yeah. You know, this is who they are. Uh, Illinois House Minority Leader, also Republican, named Jim Durkin from Western Springs, insists that he belongs to a completely different Republican Party than Donald Trump. The events unfolding in the United States Capitol today and the inflammatory remarks by the members of the Republican Party are a disgrace to the core values and beliefs of our great nation. These actions do not represent our Republican Party and are against everything we stand for as Americans. And now this is just the the number of life. That is the House Minority Leader of in the Illinois State House right. saying that right. this is our Republican Party has had nothing to do with this. Yeah, the lifeboats, man. You, the, you can you can walk. You can walk across the Great Lakes on the lifeboats that are being built yeah. right now. Yep. Emily Cahill, a Plainfield resident and Trump supporter who organized, again, official capacity, organized Wednesday's Save Our State rally outside the Illinois Capitol about the presidential election results, said, and I assume this was hours afterwards, said she mm-hmm. didn't agree with protesters storming the U.S. Capitol in the way they did. But their voices are being heard. It did stop them from certifying a faulty election, she said. So maybe it will get more light shined on the issue. Because if we don't stop what happened in 2020, the 2022 election is going to be rigged. She's right. We're going to rig the shit out of the 2022 We're gonna election. We're going to rig the shit out of the 2022 You're election, busted. Emily. <laughs> now, this this one is the most disturbing one uh, of the, all the local yeah. news. Chicago yeah. Police Union President. John Catanzara defends those who stormed the U.S. Capitol. This is via WBEZ radio. Again, we're not outing anybody uh, who's not no, talking about No, this is a union president, Chicago, Chicago police union president, speaking Chicago. in official capacity. Right. There was no arson. There was no burning of anything. There was no looting. There was very little destruction of property, uh, Catanzara told WBEZ in a Wednesday evening phone interview. It was a bunch of pissed off people that feel an election was stolen somehow in some way. He echoed President Donald Trump's oft-repeated false claims that Joe Biden stole the election. But the FOP leader admitted there was no proof. I don't have any doubt that something shady happened in this election, he said. You're not going to convince me that many people voted for Joe Biden. Never for the rest of my life will you ever convince me of that. 
But again, still, it comes down to proof. This is from a guy who can arrest people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a guy who's now – there's a a, a a capital city police officer who has died because Ted Cruz and Donald Trump promoted this. And this union – cop union official is saying, ah, eh, it wasn't nothing much. It wasn't really nothing much. You know, and you know what? Democrats I'd are like, shady I'd anyway. I'd like his comment on the, the human feces that was spread in the Capitol building and the public urination and so on and so forth. Uh, probably Antifa. Mm-hmm. Probably a bunch of Antifa guys. Might have been, oh, I forgot. It's Antifa. Yeah. Some, someone in the Crooks and Liars staff pointed out that – she really hoped they were getting DNA samples of all this poop. Yeah. Because <laughs> if they have a record of any kind, there should be DNA samples for them to scoop up. All right. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitties are Sammy and Toby. They are at least partly Seal Point Siamese, and they're beautiful kitties. Sammy and Toby were born on the 4th of July, as close as we can estimate. They were supposed to be foster kitties, but they took a look around and said, Oh, no. Oh, no. This will do nicely for our forever home. (laughs) Hashtag foster fail. (laughs) So their foster home became their forever home. And, of course, in their forever home, they insist on eating only freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And once again this week, our Bosco, when I poured out the dry food, he wouldn't start eating until I sang the song. So it's just it's it's a thing, folks. You can visit Sammy and Toby. Look, this is where we live now (laughs) at our Facebook page and website. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. We are still getting Christmas cards from you guys. Thank you so much. We are. Um, mm-hmm. And Drift Glass got a beautiful um, silicone cup that he can, that has <laughs> a 2020 dumpster fire on it that he can yeah. toss against the wall and yeah. it will not break. Yeah, and I've tried. Um, believe me, I've thrown that <laughs> son of a bitch against the wall five, six times. This bounces right back every time. What am I going to do? Thank you very much for sending that to us. Mm-hmm. And uh, don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. And again, if you have extra leftover from your COVID check, if you got one and you want to send us 1% of that to join the 1%, uh, we certainly appreciate it because approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. And you can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal and postal address information is all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties were planning an insurrection for Biden, but they got distracted by a bird. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.